Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to another episode of Sapient Thoughts where we discuss theophilosophical issues, where we refute those arguments of the detractors of Islam in addition to making our own arguments for the veracity of Islam. Today inshallah we're going to be talking about a hadith which is uh, falsely I believe translated in a, in a way that says that whoever ejaculates first, really to be crude about this, in the sexual experience uh, between man and woman, the child will, uh, will appear more like the one who ejaculates first. Now, if we look at the Arabic language and we look at the alfaz or the phraseology that is actually employed in this hadith, we will realize that the word imna is nowhere to be found in this hadith. Imna really means ejaculation. It's nowhere to be found in this hadith. It's found in the Quran. You know, for example, in Surah Al-Najm, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَى مِن نُطْفَةٍ إِذَا تُمْنَى This tumna means is from a, uh, from, from a minute quantity of liquid when it is ejaculated. So this tumna is in the Qur'an, in many different places. But it's not in this hadith. And so it could easily have been in this hadith, but it's not. What is the word or the two words? Because there are two kinds of hadith, or this hadith comes in different uh, phraseologies. The two words that are mentioned in this hadith is either sabak or ala. Now the word ala, it means to dominate. Just like in Surah Al-Mu'minun in chapter 23 verse 91, where Allah says, if there was more than one God, la'ala ba'dhuhum ala ba'd. They would have tried to dominate one another. They would try to outstrip one another. So the word ala clearly means to dominate. So if we put that back in context and we read the hadith now with this word properly translated, then we would say that it means whichever of the two fluids dominates from either the male or the female, then the shabah or the appearance will be like this. Now, this for the Arabs of the time, they may have understood it as ejaculation. Maybe. But it's not the case that the word for ejaculation was used. Thus, it's very possible that it was talking about, from our perspective, dominant genes. Since we know that we are the sum of the dominant, of the physical sum, composition, of the dominant uh, and recessive genes of either a mother and or father. So for example, if, if the mother has a, a dominant gene and the father has a recessive gene, then obviously the, the dominant gene will prevail in the genetic coding uh, in the fertilization process and beyond. And thus... Uh, there's no issue from that perspective and it can easily be correlated with the 21st century understanding without a requirement to try and do some kind of hermeneutical uh, acrobatics or gymnastics in this instance. But having said this, there's something else which needs to be said as well, which is the fact that someone may argue, however, if this is meant to be a representation of genetics as we know it now, we know that sometimes you can have recessive genes and that you can exhibit the traits that exists in some kind of ancestral line. It doesn't have to be the uh, standout traits of either the mother and or father. It could be the traits, the genetic traits of some grandfather, great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather, great-great-great-grandfather, or great-great-great-great-grandfather. It could be. And this has a, uh, an answer in the Sunnah as well, believe it or not. Because the Sunnah meaning the prophetic tradition of the Prophet. You see the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a man came to him one time. You know what he said to him? He said, listen, he said, I, my wife had a black son. Like she bore a black son. How could that be the case? You know, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, very calmly, very eloquently, very articulately, he said to him, listen, he said to him, do you have any camels? So the man said, yes, I've got some camels. He said, what, what color are the camels? He said, my camels are red. And by the way, just before we proceed, notice how the Prophet was not showing disgust or that he was saying, black child, you know, like much like much of the colonial world that was plunged in racism, steeped in racism. This was a multicultural religion, but that's another discussion for another day. The Prophet Muhammad he said, do you have any camels? He said, yes, I've got camels. He said, what kind of color were the camels? He said, they were red. He said, do you have any camels that were grey? He said, yes. He said, how comes? He said, uh, Maybe it's the case that it's from like the ant lineage, ancestral lineage, the Prophet He said, maybe your son, Maybe it's the case that your son is from or the same idea of ancestral lineage. Maybe it's the same principle. So with this we know. With this we know that the Prophet was indicating to an ancestral line and the fact that genetics can be trickled down 
from that, even though it's not dominant in either the mother or the father. In other words, both clearly, because it wouldn't have been a strange, it wouldn't have been a weird thing for that man had both of them been black. It was like, what's the problem? If both of you are black, the child is black, there's no issue. If one of you is black and the child is black, there's no, there's no, it's a non-factor. But the fact that both of them were not clearly black, right? And that the child was black, that was what made this uh, interesting, a case for, the, for, the, uh, for this man. And the Prophet said that that, is something which could have come ancestrally, in other words, trickled down, if we want to use modern parlance, genetically. And thus, there's no, absolutely no, from all of these perspectives, there is absolutely no way that you can try and use this hadith, or these hadiths, and the corpus and collection of the hadith together, to try and disprove Islam. One might be cheeky and even say that they, if you do believe in the veracity of the scientific method to the extent to which you seem to want to believe it, even may affirm what the hadiths are saying from an outside perspective. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.